Hello, this is Swedish Massage Level 1, and this will be the upper and lower back routine. You can follow along with your Swedish manual because we'll be covering all of those strokes. So you want to begin by doing some centering. Make sure you have nice clean hands and short fingernails. And we have a client on the table. Today's model is Christy, and we're ready to go. Okay, we're going to begin by doing just a little bit of rocking and oscillations so you have a review of that. Notice it's a press and release, a call and return, and I'm using the hand holds of the body. Here, we're using the spine, the sacrum, scapula. I want to be gentle but firm. And I move around the table to the shoulders. This is a nice way to open a massage. It allows the client to become relaxed and to sink into the table. A final technique here using sacrum. And always, always, throughout the massage, we're going to use very soft hands. Notice how my hands ride the surface of the body. Just really feeling and molding to all the different angles, curves, and details. And now we will drape for a back massage, because there's a blanket on the table, we're going to pull that back first. And remember, for the back massage, we're going to pull the drape back just above the gluteal cleavage. And so once again, pulling the sheet back. Finding the appropriate position and tucking so the client knows where the drape is and feels secure. So we start with, in this case, cream, but your lubricant of choice, enough to cover the entire surface of the back. And remember, we want to get the sides, the shoulders, the neck. If you apply the lubricant correctly, you shouldn't have to reapply during the course of the massage. Enter the field slowly and gently, don't plop your hands down on the body. And we're just covering all the different surfaces. And this is like finger painting. So while it has the functional benefit of spreading the lubricant, we are also beginning to warm up the tissues. And so we'll call this finger painting. Just drawing little designs, different patterns. Hands can move together or separately. Finding flow. We can move into figure eights. big ones and little ones, circles, big ones, little ones, and here I'm moving into spirals up and down the back. Notice how my hands dance together. I don't hyperextend my wrists. And as always, my hands are soft. And now we're going to move into straight lines down the back. Reinforced hands. Whenever we say reinforced hands, it's going to look like this. And so reinforced hands, straight lines. 
Notice I place the hands, I sink, and stroke. Place, sink, stroke. And we get a nice relaxation response from our client. We're going to move into hand over hand. So one hand follows another. This gives the feeling of one nice big hand. Place, sink, and stroke. Notice I'm not in a hurry. I take my time to really work the entire back from the shoulder all the way down to sacrum. I want to have complete strokes. Even if I only go this far, I want it to have a feeling of beginning and end. Fluidity. And now we're going to move into the one, two, and return on three. One, two, return. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. This gives a very fluid, continuous stroke. Notice I'm still flourishing off at the end, but I have a very nice, smooth rhythm. This one's worth practicing. It's an excellent stroke. Clients really appreciate it. So now we're going to move into upper back strokes. And we'll begin with the whole hand sweeps around the shoulders, down in front, and up the neck, and back. Watch how I use all the surfaces of my hands. I sink fingers, palms, side of the hand, sweep around, all the way up the neck to occiput, and then back. Round and now we'll do it with a little more rhythm and flow. I'm really sinking my weight into this aspect of the stroke. See how our shoulders stretch and spread laterally. And if I need to, I can come up and sort of move her hair out of the way and sink back in without losing continuity. Okay? Now we're going to do a stroke where we reach across the body. We don't do this often. We only do it when the result is equal to the effort. So we're going to petrosize the opposite shoulder. We're going to do that in two rhythms. A push-pull, push, pull, hands in opposition. I'm going to break that down. First we set the hand here. We're going to push through with the heel of the hand and pull back with the fingers. Push through heel of the hand, pull back, and I'm reaching down under the shoulder and pulling back with the fingers. Now I'm going to add the opposite hand. And so you get a ringing effect. Very nice for that knot we get in our upper shoulder. Notice my fingers aren't coming up. They're very soft. They're really riding the surface, sinking into the tissue. Push-pull, petrissage of the opposite shoulder. And now we're going to move into a swish-swish petrissage of the opposite shoulder, which looks like this. I'm going to break it down. One hand pulls, the other hand moves down the neck. And the kneading happens here at the angle. And notice I'm using this surface of my hand. 